Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have x to the power log y over log x equals y squared minus 1. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end which kind of explains what is going on. So I'm thinking about presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I would like to log both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. And if I log, and here log means base 10, in case you didn't know. I'm going to log both sides with base 10. And then this is going to give me a nice equation. Why? Because you can go ahead and bring the exponent down so you can go ahead and move this to the front and it'll simplify our expression so that's going to be log y over log x multiplied by log x equals log y squared minus 1 there's a couple things we need to talk about first of all if you look at the original problem you do not want log x to be 0, right? Obviously. And log x equals 0 when x is equal to 1. So log x does not equal 0 implies x does not equal 1. And also, since we have log x and log y, you do not want x and y to be less than or equal to 0. So x, y has to be positive. So x cannot be 1, x has to be positive, and y has to be positive. When we look at the graph, this is going to make more sense. Okay? So, under those conditions, let's go ahead and solve this problem. Since we multiplied log x by 1 over log x here, they're going to cancel out. And that's going to leave us with something much, much simpler. And best of all, x is gone. We don't have x. And what are we solving for here? Both x and y. But we're going to find some numerical values for y. So let's go ahead and write it this way, having the quadratic term on the left-hand side. And then since we have logs, now what happens if you get an equation like log a equals log b? Does that always imply a equals b? Or is that the only solution? And the answer is yes. Because log, or y equals log x, is an increasing function. If you think about the graph of log x, it looks like this. Maybe not that sharp, but hopefully you get the idea. This is the graph of y equals, and I actually don't want to confuse you by using the same variables. Let's go ahead and write it as f of t equals log t, and this is 1 the x um, or the t intercept in this case t comma f of t okay so notice that our function is always increasing and you can verify it with calculus if you differentiate this function you're going to notice that it's always positive its derivative is positive indicating that the function is always increasing okay cool what am i going to get from here you're going to get actually a very nice result which has, should I say that? Not yet. Okay, let me go ahead and do the following. Since logs can be canceled out, this is an increasing function. There's only one solution to this, and that is when the arguments are equal. So y squared minus 1 equals y is the only, or are the only solutions, I should say, at this point. Because that's quadratic, it's going to give us two solutions. So, let's go ahead and... Simplify this, subtract y from both sides and make it a full quadratic. Use the quadratic formula. That's going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus plus 4ac, which is 4. Divide that by 2. And this gives you 1 plus minus square root of 5 divided by 2. If you go ahead and split it up into two solutions, you're going to get y sub 1 equals 1 plus root 5 over 2. And y sub 2 equals 1 minus 
root 5 over 2. Okay, great. So we have two solutions, but we have to check them. Why? Because we have a domain for x and y. Since we're not really dealing with y as a function of x, we can kind of talk about the domain of both of these. And we said that y must be positive, x must be positive, and x must be different from 1. Now, do our solutions satisfy that criteria? y must be positive. 1 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 0. So we're not going to take it. Any negative number is out. So that's the only solution for y value, which means y is going to be constant. If you think about this on the x, y coordinate system, then, uh, you know, it's going to give you a horizontal line. But you'll see in a little bit some of the details. Make sense? Okay. So what is this number? This number is very special number. It is called the golden ratio. Now, what is so special about the golden ratio? Let's talk about it real quick. Well, golden ratio is a really interesting number such that if you draw a golden rectangle such that it's the ratio of its side lengths are you know let's say a to b and then you take out a square from this split up this and so that this is a square now you have a here you have a here you have b minus a here and this is also b minus a and a you get a rectangle that has the same ratio of the side lengths as the original one. Make sense? So in other words, the original ratio was B to A in the larger rectangle. In the smaller one, it is going to be A over B minus A. And this ratio, B to A ratio, is called the golden ratio. And golden ratio actually appears in so many different places in nature, in math, in other sciences. It has some very, very interesting properties. And obviously, from here you can solve a quadratic that gives you the value of b over a, which is going to be 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is about 1.6. And one of the interesting applications is when you have something like this, that's an infinite radical, its ratio is going to be, or its value that it converges to, is going to be the golden ratio or if you do the same thing with ones in the form of fractions like an infinite fraction it's also going to be the golden ratio and obviously you can find lots of lots of things that you know turn into golden ratio at some point anyways let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll just finish up with our solutions oh by the way i forgot to mention i said that okay y is going to be the golden ratio as you can see here but x can be positive, and I think I said that, didn't I? x must be positive and different from 1. That's why I added those open dots, which Desmos doesn't. Kind of sad, right? But anyways, hopefully they'll do it one day. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.